So this is a VPeak OBD2 scanner tool that will Bluetooth to your phone or tablet or whatever. So I thought I'd give this a try. I picked this one specifically because uh, it's what the out of spec channel uses. And uh, it's also pretty inexpensive. It was just a little over 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, so let's get it unboxed here. Oh wow, it's not even, oh, I see. It's in a little case, that's nice. Oh, nice. Okay, quick start guide. Okay, iOS and Android. Cool. Here's the actual unit. Okay. Pretty simple. So I'm actually going to use my iPad because I use my phone primarily for filming. Okay, so in the user manual here, um, for iOS, they generally recommend car scanner. So that's what we're gonna try. We can try some of the other ones too. So on the iPad, we've got car scanner here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that. Okay, so we're downloading car scanner here. Um, the other one the manual suggests is this OBD Fusion. And it looks like for Android, uh, Torque Lite is, is the main one, but that's not available on the App Store for iOS. All right, so we're launching Car Scanner here. Okay, so we got Car Scanner installed. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. So plug it in right here. Okay, we'll turn this on. So we we can see uh, VPeak on here, but it does not want us to pair it that way. Okay, so we're gonna do connect. All right, so we got everything here. We're just on a level one charger on the wall over there. Plugged in and we're at 49% state of charge. So you can see right now High voltage battery voltage, 352 volts. Here's the temperature, which makes sense because inside the garage here says we're at 57 degrees. Just under a kilowatt going into the battery right now. AC. So you can see high voltage EV power going up to two kilowatts there. Um, let's see now, how about let's switch got the heat on so let's turn AC off and then we're gonna crank the heat you can see we're really spiking on the on the heater there seven to eight kilowatts right now um, also on the display just want to show you how that adds up so I can see 45% on the screen um, our actual state of charge is 46% um, that makes sense because right around 50% is literally 50% on the display and on the battery and then the buffer is at the bottom and at the top end. Uh, you can see we've got about 30 kilowatt hours left. There's some pretty cool other pages in here including like the brake light switch so if I push the brake you can see that come on. Battery age that's interesting. The car will... I bought the car in June two years ago so I've owned the car for... 22 months and then it took some time for it to get assembled built and shipped so that seems about right all right so that's the setup there pretty simple uh that didn't take very long at all uh so yeah let's let's go see uh some of the stats we can see when we dc fast charge when we level two charge um and then just when we're driving see if we see anything else interesting just want to note i did leave my vp plugged in overnight uh, the little blue light on the unit stays on and I got this message on the car the next day so I think if you're going to leave the car sit for a while you might want to consider unplugging your VPeak just heads up driving here we're going to go check out another page here kind of as we're driving Okay, we're going to hit it again. Okay, we're 
we're going up a hill right now. And then we're going to hit the brakes. Okay, we're going to have a should have a nice downhill here where we can get a little going a little faster and then do some do some bigger regen. Pretty good regen there. All right, we're gonna get on the interstate here. Okay, we're up to 60. Hit it. Okay, we're up to 80. And we're gonna maintain 80 here, and then we're maintaining 80, but we're going up a hill a little bit. So you can kind of see how much juice we're using just to maintain 80 here. Uh, but keep in mind, we're going up a hill. Try some other pages here. Camera's blocking the sensor. Okay. Speed limit changed here. We're going to slow down a little bit. Okay, we're going to maintain about, maintain 70 here. So constant speed, we're going uphill just a little bit. Kind of got some ups and downs here. Nothing nothing major, but enough that you're definitely gonna see the power go up and down. We'll get to some flatter road here pretty soon, I think. All right, this next little stretch is fairly flat. So maintaining 70 here. Had somebody cut in front of us, so Blue Cruise slowed us down there. Man, I have so many thoughts about this. Uh, wow. I mean, if you're familiar with combustion engines and RPMs, you know, obviously you have multiple gears typically, you know, at least four or five, and a lot of cars now have, you know, as many as 10 gears in, in an automatic. And so your engine RPMs most of the time for just cruising are somewhere between 1,500 and 3,500. And then you're really only going to go above that if you're really trying to accelerate quickly. And so just to see these, this RPM of the electric motor at, you know, seven or 8,000 RPM, that, that sounds really fast. That's really cool. Like, I, I feel like we need to bring that into the electric cars. Like, put a tack on here and show me that it goes up to, I don't know what the max is. Um, you know, if the max, I forget what the Mach-E tops out at. I can't remember if it's like 120 or 130. I don't, I'm not sure. But show me the max motor RPM is like 15,000 RPM. I mean, that's cool. I think that's really cool. Like, why not, why not show that? I think we've sanitized these displays so much and just we lose some of that connection with the machine and what's going on and I think that's what car guys look like me that's that's what we like to see so bring bring that back all right trying some other pages here battery power um, yeah pretty interesting on the primary and secondary motor there so we're cruising and the primary motor in the Mach-E is going to be your rear motor. Um, that's the larger motor. You know, this is a rear-wheel drive platform. And then they add a front motor for the all-wheel drive and then also for the GT for the performance. But they, they really don't use the front motor very much. Um, you 
know, unless it's a slippery situation or you're really trying to accelerate quickly. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool that the front motor isn't doing a whole lot right now. Okay, we are going to stab it here in a second. Ready? Hit it. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool to see that. And that totally makes sense. Um, they're using both motors when you really step on it. And, like, mildly stepping on it, it's using the, the front motor a little bit. Um, if I just lightly tap it, it's not doing a whole lot. So that's cool to see. Um, let's try another page. Just kind of focus on total power output. Cruising at 70 here. Let me turn off the climate. So I'm going to turn off the AC and the fan and all that. And that power usage should go down just a little bit. And then uh, let, me, let me kick that back on. see the uh, the motor temps there you know we've been driving for 15 20 minutes or so here tire pressures it's kind of amazing those are have that much resolution oh there's the AC see that's running braking let me uh, Let's turn off the AC again. So yep, that that dipped as expected, so that's cool. Oh, that's cool. You can see the grill shutters there at the top left opening and closing as we slow down. We did that video a while ago with the camera on the front. We don't even need that anymore. We can just look at it here. That's pretty cool. Okay, we initiated the charge. This thing's ramping up. Okay, car says we're charging. Okay, you can see the amperage going up there. Let's go check inside the car. So max power is 108 kilowatts and we're getting 100 at 277 amps. So you can see where this says we're doing 300 amps. So that's probably, probably some cable losses there. And then we're doing car says we're doing about 280 amps, 275 amps. Um, let's see, we are doing about 200 amps now and 80 kilowatts going in. So that's kind of where it likes to sit, somewhere in that 80 kilowatt range. All right, well, I think that's about it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed getting to see that. I'll definitely be using car scanner with the VPeak adapter a lot more in future videos. Uh, I think it's going to give us a lot more useful and helpful data to really see what's going on, especially charging, but also some of the other interesting stuff like the brake lights, uh, the grill shutters, uh, stuff like that. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to pick up one of these for you, and I'll see you next video. Thanks. Bye.